world of chocolate recently has been embroiled in a chocolatey sticky mess. The pioneers of raw chocolate, raw cacao, uh, seem to be in some disagreement and some disarray at the moment. The first I heard of it was one of the leading importers here told me that actually he'd stopped eating it himself because he found it was making his body go rather acidic. Then, uh, just recently, somebody sent me a very interesting YouTube of uh, ten of the uh, raw health leaders, as it happened, who were at a conference and they were each asked, what, if you had to name one product in the health food range that you would avoid, what would it be? And out of those ten, I think it was six that said raw cacao. So I'm intrigued by this and I'm still researching it to find out the real truth of it. I've read uh, the majority of David Wolfe's book uh, uh, about cacao and it's a uh, very compelling reading and very, very believable. And I think clearly uh, such a complex food is going to have a whole host of beneficial effects. But just possibly the reason they started roasting chocolate in the first place right at the beginning was perhaps they knew something and they realised that it wasn't just the taste and the way they could manipulate the chocolate as a reason for roasting it, maybe it was for a real valid reason. However, today I'm going to show you how to make uh, raw chocolates into a delicious uh, chocolate sweet. So, as a basis for the chocolate, clearly you need some chocolate powder. This one uh, is organic Ecuadorian chocolate powder, but it doesn't matter too much which country you get it in. It rather depends actually um, uh, the quality of the grower and the quality of the seeds and, and so on. Um, in here I've got some Yacon root powder, and I realise that many of you uh, won't necessarily have heard of Yacon root powder, uh, but it's um, uh, becoming fairly easily available and it's, it's quite a sweet powder that comes from a South American root and it makes a rather good base actually to mix with the chocolate. So uh, if I put the chocolate uh, in, I didn't measure it, I just, just tipped it out. I don't really believe accuracy is particularly necessary. Um, I quite like uh, a crunchy taste, so I've got here some cocoa nibs. Um, you can slide the powder within chunks. Pop that in. Um, now, goji berries, uh, contrary to what's often written, they often don't have as much vitamin C as people believe, but they've virtually got every other fantastic vitamin and mineral in combination that you could dream of. Um, I eat them actually deliberately to improve my eyesight, for which they're very famous. They're famous for all sorts of other uh, wonderful reasons as well. Um, now, if for some reason it's not sweet enough, there are many, many things you could sweeten it up with. I think the acorn will make it sweet, sweet enough, but you know, one could add some honey, add some manuka honey here, but any natural pure honey would do. Um, I've got some coconut palm sugar here, and coconut sugar actually is quite delicious. It's not as bad for you as regular sugar, but it's not, not, not perfect, but it's not bad. Yacon syrup, if you're lucky enough to find it, is absolutely delicious. You know, very like maple syrup and all these natural sweeteners in their pure form, particularly something like maple, which is just essentially used out of the tree. Um, while you don't want too much because you don't want to have a blood sugar spike, uh, you know, a reasonable, adequate amount is, uh, I, th I think, uh, advised. You know, balance and everything. Now, um, you may have seen, you, you probably are familiar with those sort of orange fruits that come wrapped in green leaves, you know, fissalis. Now these are dried fissalis, and um, some people call them Inca fruit, and they're quite tart. So we'll, we'll put a few of those in there, just a little surprise for people who, uh, who are trying it. Now, um, one could put nuts in there. Here are some uh, organic hazelnuts, so I think we'll shove those in. Uh, you could roast them, uh, and arguably the roast ones would probably be better for the purpose of this video, just imagine they're roasted. These are some sunflower seeds that uh, I sowed earlier on, the, on in the day, and if the sunflower seeds begin to sprout, you really have brought them back uh, to life again, because while the seed is the dormant power of last year's plant, once you've added just water, it doesn't need sunlight or anything, they grow underground, once you've just added water, you're bringing it back, bursting into the vibrant life again. 
So how much have you increased the mineral and vitamin content of the seed just by soaking it for a few hours? Well, massively actually. Uh, and people uh, argue about what the numbers are and I don't suppose the proper research has been done. But it is massive. And if you think about the power of a seed, you know, a seed can crack the motorway and the plant comes up right through the tarmac. A lot of power in the seeds and I would recommend sprouting any seeds uh, that you can. Um, so, uh, now here I've got a mixture of two things melting. You can see the, the solid white uh, coconut oil and that's uh, cocoa butter or cacao butter. And um, just before we add the coconut and the cacao butter, there are a number of other ingredients that you could, at this point, add. Now, one of the things I find about raw chocolate is that it's so powerful, so chocolatey, that you can hide various things that otherwise might not taste too great. So, there are a number of health foods which come in powders, which from time to time I, I like to enjoy. So, let's have a look at them. Uh, this one is uh, Camu Camu powder, and it's... I think probably among the absolute highest vitamin C containing uh, fruit powders and it's quite sharp so in this case I'm not going to put too much in because there's some children who are going to come home and eat it later and if it's too sharp we don't want that. Now in here we've got a mixture of uh, astragalus root, reishi mushroom, maca root, chia seed, uh, guarana, uh, cayenne, uh, and strawberry powder. So um, this is a very nice uh, mixture of some adaptogenic herbs and adaptogenic herbs literally do, do, what, do what they say, they, they help your body adapt to things, adapt to change. Um, here we've got something called faux tea which is otherwise known as ho shu wu and supposedly the, the old Chinese stories say that Mr. Ho shu wu um, uh, which means Mr. Black Hair, um, had white or grey hair, but after eating uh, the Ho Shu Wu, the Fo Tea, for about a year, he got all this hair colour back, so I can do with a bit of that, so I'm quite happy to mix that in. Let me show you some of the other things you could have put in, uh, and we still might. Um, now, it's quite strong, so you don't want too much of it, but a little bit of you know, turmeric is a fantastically healthy uh, thing. I want to be very scientific and put in a measured uh, quantity here. Uh, just a little bit. I mean, it, it, it does make a pretty colour. And if you don't put in too much, then, then it's not going to affect the taste in a negative way. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, rose hips. Powdered rose hips again, brilliant for vitamin C. And we'll just put in just again a tiny little bit. And, you know, this time of year, it's, it's winter now, um, in England, our ancestors would be hard pushed to find sweet things. But rose hips, which are sweet for, you know, there's always pretty much a sweet rose hip on, on any wild rose tree, are, are sweet for sort of about five months of the year, and a massively fabulous source of living sea as well. Uh, this is ground cinnamon. I'll just put a, another touch in there. Not really so much for the taste, but... Cinnamon and turmeric, for instance, are hugely uh, a, a, a healing. Uh, massive research done on both of them, because of course they're both uh, herbs from the Chinese and Indian traditions, uh, known about a thousand of years, written about a thousand of years. Uh, here we've got, um, the, this is algaroba or mesquite, uh, otherwise known as uh, the locust bean or carob. We've got um, maca here, we've already put a bit of that in. Maca is fantastically useful uh, from a hormonal perspective, it tends to be hormon hormonally balancing, uh, quite, quite an important uh, root powder. It tastes quite nice, it tastes quite sweet. I used to make uh, chocolate a lot uh, using maca as the base instead of the acorn uh, powder, and um, I've also uh, used several other things, uh, lacuma possibly, arguably, is the nicest tasting of the lot. And of course you can make any of these chocolate delights without the chocolate at all. You can have a mixture of the carob and the lacuma, for instance, or any combination that you like. You can flavour it up with anything. Um, you know, I've made uh, orange flavoured ones using orange essential oils, 
lemon essential oils, lime essential oils, and I'll put some fruit essential oils in here now because it really adds to the depth of flavour. And of course, the essential oils are fantastically healthy, absolutely amazing. And um, this is the one area that I should have prepared a little earlier. However, uh, this is uh, lime, and I think that should go very well with it. So, I'll probably put about 20 drops of lime in there, uh, which will be a nice, uh, pleasant flavour. So, uh, the next thing to uh, put in would be uh, some Celtic salt. Now, salt uh, enhances the flavour tremendously, and uh, I have some over here as well. So, we'll just pop some of that in it. So now we're ready to add the cocoa butter and the coconut oil. So we'll just pour that in and um, with that a bit more if I haven't put in enough. Uh, always best to put in too little of the oil because it's only got one thing to add. If you, if you put too much oil in uh, then you've got to mix, mix quite a lot of the ingredients together so it's harder work. And uh, I've made actually the classic mistake of putting too much oil in first thing, so it's too runny at the moment. I mean, for a lot of people's taste, this would be just fine uh, because it would be quite oily. Um, and you know, actually, it is very nice that way. And I think what we'll do in this case to balance it back out is I think we'll put some maca in it because uh, this will. Uh, Help uh, soak up some of the excess coconut. Let's see how that works. Then we'll put in a bit of the algarobe, the mesquite, which actually's got a great. Oh, I can smell the smell coming off the maca, and it reminds me how delicious that is. So I'm actually going to put in more maca because it's smelling really nice. You know, with a lot of these unusual products, which aren't the native to my ancestry, um, I find that uh, I quite like them once or twice, uh, and then I'm going to break for them for a while. And I think it may be that because we are supposed to be eating seasonally, that these products from faraway lands are a wonderful treat. Possibly not something that we're really designed to eat every day. So just for a bit of variation, let's put in some algarobe as well, see what that smells like. Hmm, quite different. The, the maca smells nice, so I know this has got a lovely taste, so we'll show some of this in as well. So I mean, we're ending up with now a product that isn't nearly as chocolatey as I'd intended. But actually, I don't think it's going to matter. I think it will have a delicious flavour nevertheless. Now we're, we're going to a pastier, more solid feel. And what you do after this is pop it in the fridge uh, for half an hour. And um, within half an hour it'll be set. So I think we're just about there. What I'm going to do at this point is just uh, have a little taste. Mm, pretty good. I'm going to add some Celtic salt. The salt really does bring out the flavour very nicely. Not too much actually. Quite as sweet as I think it could be, so I'm going to put in a little bit of this coconut sugar after all. Again, because there are children living in this house who probably want to try it, so I'm going to make it as child friendly as seems reasonable. So now it's a nice consistency now, really pretty solid. So you can put it at this point in ice cubes, for instance, or you've just put it in recycled plastic trays. For about a pound, often a couple of pounds, you can get some quite nice flexible ice cube trays, uh, which double nicely as chocolate making trays. You can make hearts and all sorts of different shapes. Uh, but for sheer speed, there's nothing like just putting it in a block like this, and then no uh, once it's cold, you can just slice it up with a sharp knife, store it, store it in a glass jar with a, a lid on in the fridge. They really are best straight from the fridge. 
One of the other things I really like to do is to use bananas, particularly ones that are so overripe that, that maybe you wouldn't necessarily want to eat with them, you might want to cook with them. But if you mash up an overripe banana into, the, into mixtures like these, it adds a lovely sweetness to it and the real depth of flavour. And I really recommend it. And most often I, uh, well actually buy bananas occasionally when I'm in the mood, uh, deliberately to let them get overripe so I can add them to, to the uh, chocolate dishes. So there you have it. I don't recommend that one gorges oneself on the stuff. I think one should, as one always has with chocolate, regard it as a delicious treat and treat yourself from time to time. Because it does imbue a lot of people with quite a bit of energy, it might be worth having it uh, in the morning rather than before bed. You know, some people find it does give them that energy boost and you could even prevent them from sleeping, despite the high amounts of magnesium that are in the chocolate. You know, the chocolate is extraordinary. Chocolate has about 2,000 individual flavours that you can uh, determine in it. Uh, it's one of the most complex foods on the planet. And uh, to be frank, it's my favourite. So I hope you enjoy making wonderful things with chocolate. Do your own research. And I'd be very interested to see what you think as to whether you feel it is, on balance, a really fantastic thing or just what. I'm hoping for it's fantastic. Thank you.